Hi there, let's have a look at power and ambition, themes in Macbeth. Starting off with, is Macbeth unambitious? At the start of the play, Macbeth does not seem to be very ambitious. His wife, Lady Macbeth, is much more ambitious for him than he is for himself. What's the significance of this ambition? Shakespeare links having ambition with evil and committing evil deeds. Some people think that Lady Macbeth encourages Macbeth to murder King Duncan because of her own ambition. What's Macbeth's perception on this? At the start of the play, Macbeth does not seem to be ambitious. He is already a thane, so he has some social status. He does not seem to want more. When he is given the title, Thane of Cordor, he is surprised. What's Lady Macbeth's perspective? Lady Macbeth is more ambitious for her husband. She believes he deserves more than he has, but that he is too nice for his own good. She thinks he won't go after power. This is the quote from Lady Macbeth. Glamour thou art, and Cordor, and shalt be. What thou art promised, yet as do as I fear thy nature, it is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Lady Macbeth thinks that Macbeth does have ambition, but he is too good, gentle, and kind to go after what he wants. Here's another quote from Lady Macbeth. Thou wouldst be great, art not without ambition, but without the illness should attend it. What does Shakespeare think link having ambition with? Is it evil, children, witches, or armour? The correct answer is evil. Lady Macbeth, Macbeth is ambitious for her husband. She believes he deserves more than he has, but that he is too what for his own good. Rather too nice for his own good. She thinks that he won't go after power. And then here's the quote, just to recap. Glamour thou art, and called all, and shalt be what thou art promised, yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. An important one to remember is milk of human kindness. But try and remember the whole quote. Now let's have a look at the significance of Macbeth's ambition. His growing ambition eventually causes his downfall, and he becomes paranoid as a result of his ambition. The significance of that damnation? At the time the play was set, people believed in heaven and hell, and if someone went against God's will, they would be damned, otherwise known as condemned in the afterlife, and punished in hell for all eternity. This was often seen as more frightening than allowing harm to happen to you when you're alive. Once Macbeth had damned himself by killing King Duncan, nothing he could do would save his mortal soul, so he may as well pursue all his ambitions and kill anyone who gets in his way, because punishment by God has already been decided. Paranoia. After the death of King Duncan, Macbeth cannot cope with what he has done, perhaps because his religious guilt comes into play here. He becomes more and more paranoid. The price of filling his ambition was not worth it. And here's a quote from Macbeth. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, and that which should accompany old age as honour, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. Macbeth lists all the things he should have had in later life, like an honourable reputation of many friends. He has lost everything by going after the crown, and that's what this quote means. Now let's have a look at the cause of his downfall. You could argue that ambition causes Macbeth's downfall. Macbeth's ambition changes his life from good to horrific and causes his death. It's caused by the outside force of the witch's prophecies. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth make huge errors in judgment as they allow their greedy desire to power for power to overtake them. The audience can see their bad choices building up through the play, and they know that it cannot end well for each character. Therefore, the tragic mood of the play starts as soon as Macbeth meets the witches in Act 1 and gets worse as, until he eventually dies in Act 5. Let's just quickly recap that. How does Macbeth initially damn his soul? Is it by letting his wife control him, by killing Banquo, by murdering Macduff's family, or is it by killing Duncan? The correct answer is by killing Duncan. After the death of King Duncan, Macbeth cannot cope with what he's done. He becomes more and more what? The answer is more and more paranoid. The price of fulfilling his mort was not worth it. The correct answer is the price of fulfilling his, price of fulfilling his ambition. And here's another quote, just to recap this one. I have lived long enough. My way of life is fallen into the sea, the yellow leaf, and that which shall accompany old age as honour, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. Let's quickly recap. Which of these are true of Macbeth at the start of the play? Is he more? Is his wife more ambitious for him than he is for himself? Or is his wife worried that his ambition will lead him to do bad things? The correct answer is that his wife is more ambitious for him than he is for himself. 
is he plotting to murder Duncan from the first act, or does he not seem to be ambitious? Or, as Lady Macbeth persuades him to murder Duncan, he does not seem to be ambitious. Is he already a thane and does not seem to want more, or is he aware of his potentially dangerous and ambitious nature from the start? The correct answer is that he is already a thane and does not want to seem to want more. Is he surprised when he's given the title of Thane of Cordor, or does he murder it immorally in order to get the title of Thane of Cordor? The correct answer is he's surprised, and he wins it as a result of his actions during a battle. So, let's complete the following quote, showing Macbeth's panel after killing Duncan. I have lived long enough, my way of life is fallen into the seer, the yellow leaf, and that which shall accompany old age as honour, what? Obedience, dupes of friends, I must not look to have. And the correct answer in the blank is love. As honour, love, obedience, troops of friends, I must not look to have. Let's explore the ways in which ambition causes Macbeth's downfall, just to recap. Macbeth's ambition changes his life from good to horrific and causes his death. It is caused by the outside force of the witch's prophecies. Macbeth and Lady Macbeth make huge errors in judgment as they allow their greedy desire for power to overtake them. And the audience can see their bad choices building up throughout the play, and they know that it cannot well end well for either character.